morning and welcome to worship here at our Savior's Lutheran Church in Stillwater, Minnesota. We are so glad you are joining us today and we invite you to come again. If you would like more information about us, you can email us at info, I-N-F-O, at O-S-L-C, stillwater.org, and sign up for our weekly e-news. In this, you will have updates about programs and ministries and also a little devotion from me, and that is sent every Tuesday afternoon. Also want to welcome a new member of our congregation. We have Linda Nelson that just joined this week. Linda is a wonderful gal that also happens to be the sister-in-law to a member, Jan Lepla. Linda has been looking for a church and recognized as she was here a couple weeks ago over Memorial Weekend, what a special spirit there is here and how warm and welcoming it is as she enjoyed the time of coffee hour and worship. So welcome to Linda. We're so glad you are joining us as our new member. At this time, let us begin with our confession of sin and God's forgiveness to us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We join together with the Olson family in singing Better Is One Day. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Sunday morning. Please join us as we sing Better Is One Day. Oh, oh, oh. 
Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Jesus' followers continued to spread the word about him, including Saul, now called Paul, and his friend Barnabas. They traveled by foot and boat, inviting other followers of Jesus to join them in sharing the good news about Jesus. In each new city they visited, Paul would go first to the synagogue to share with the Jewish people that the Messiah had come. Everywhere he went, people believed what Paul was teaching and chose to start following the way of Jesus. But some simply couldn't believe what Paul was saying, and others were threatened by Paul's message and began trying to find ways to stop him. A few times, Paul and his friends were attacked and beaten so severely that they almost died. They were also thrown in jail. Despite this opposition, Paul kept telling others about Jesus. One night, sitting in prison, Paul and his fellow worker Silas began to sing songs to God in the middle of the night. When they did, a violent earthquake shook the jail and all of the prison doors came open. The prison guard was so distraught that he took out his own sword to kill himself until Paul shouted out, Don't harm yourself! We are all here! The guard was so overwhelmed by Paul and Silas 
that he asked them to tell him and his family about Jesus and about God's ways. In each city, Paul helped Jesus' followers organize themselves into communities called churches. After he left these churches, he would often write letters back to them to encourage, correct, and teach them to live more like Jesus. These letters were read aloud in the churches over and over and have continued to be read by followers of Jesus for thousands of years. One of the texts covered in our chapter for this week from the story is from Galatians. It wasn't in the video, but let me read it to you. It's Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than the neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whatever, whenever you have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all and especially for those of the family of faith. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're not exempt. Beginning in March of 2020, when we heard we would not be except, exempt from the coronavirus that had been found across the U.S., through this very day we have learned yet another meaning of what it means to not be exempt. We don't live in a bubble protected by anti-warfare materials and exceptionally perfect communities. We're not exempt from the trials of gun violence, racism struggles, housing complications, addictions, and so much more. And we certainly cannot ignore the reality that we too are surrounded by tragedy. It doesn't always make the news, but we can be sure that neither us nor those around us are exempt from the tragedies that life can bring. So what would you do when a 25-year-old who is homeless comes to you hungry? Where would you have her go or how would you help? Or the one who has recently gone through treatment and is now trying to get back into work but legal records prevent employment? What do we do when a neighbor we don't like falls ill? What kind of responsibility do we have knowing this? And do we know what community resources are available to help? While you and I might be able to, to help in these situations short-term, our community is filled with long-term help, resources of both people and places that are ready and willing when trials come for any of us. And at the same time, we live in a world that often gives us the message that we either deserve the situation we're in or we should just suck it up and take care of ourselves, and that if we struggle, we've got to get it together. We're surrounded by the message that being busy can be a status symbol, and that it's okay to be too busy to help. Well, Paul wrote to the Galatians knowing their life situation. He wrote, they knew because he knew that they were struggling. They were struggling with what it meant to be faithful. The Galatians were working at doing the right thing, and for them, they were understanding that they still needed to follow the Torah, the law of God. They hadn't either heard or believed the good news of Jesus. So now Paul comes along, and this community of Galatia at this time was struggling with circumcision, saying, if you're really faithful, you will have circumcision, you'll have a sign, and it'll be a law to follow that you're faithful. Paul comes along and says, it's not what you or I do that determines faithfulness. It's what Jesus has done for us. 
It's Jesus who has been crucified and now been raised, who calls us to this life of restoration and gentleness. Paul had also heard Jesus' voice when he'd been persecuting Christians. And then Jesus blinded him and talked to him and asked him why he was, was, um, was enslaving or um, arresting Christians. And um, he changed Paul's life. He gave him his sight back. And Paul, who had been Saul, was then named Paul. And he became this preacher, a follower of Jesus. Paul had heard and experienced that we're called into community where we see each other differently than the world sees us. That as the body of Christ, you and I have a calling that is deeper and stronger and more giving than the world will ever understand. So now Galatians, they're people who knew Paul, and Paul was aware of the trials in their lives. He also was aware of Jesus' call to care for each other, whether we want to take the time or not, whether we like the people or not, but Paul knew as we continue to experience that there's no need to point a finger at those that we see are struggling or those who we know are living in temptations and trials. No need because you and I are also vulnerable to the struggles and temptations that life brings. Vulnerable to changes that come quickly that sometimes we can't predict. So he writes to make clear that life in Jesus is one where Jesus provides. Life that is very intended to be in community, not independent and isolated, but where his children see each other, see needs, and then work at caring for each other. Community was important. It's huge. The support and care that Paul lays out, it's not possible always by immediate family, and we need a greater community. So he says, if anyone is detected in a transgression, anyone, he doesn't say if it's someone you really like or someone you care about. He doesn't even say if it's someone you vaguely know. He says, if anyone is detected in a transgression, that is, found to have made decisions that hurt relationships, hurt a relationship with their Lord, then you who have received God's Holy Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. But then he says, take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Maybe that's a temptation to walk away. Maybe that's a temptation to take on what we really can't handle instead of getting help. Take care of each other. It's the same spirit who in baptism names us his own and calls us and leads us and guides us and in this life now leads us from temptation to restore each other in that spirit of gentleness. It's not simply about saying it's okay and blowing it off. But it's about gentleness with humility and kindness in awareness of the shame and the hurt that the other is holding. Holding that one accountable, not saying there are no consequences, but dealing with that one in gentleness. And at the same time, being aware so as not to be led into that same transgression, the same decision or action that could be harmful or dangerous or disappointing. And perhaps being aware that we're not tempted to walk away or maybe tempted to point a finger and say, it'll never be me, because the reality is we are not exempt. We're not exempt from trials or temptations. So then in the spirit of gentleness, we're called to restore. Restore through honest conversation. Restore by speaking the truth even when it's hard and even when there's a risk that the other doesn't want to hear it. Speaking the truth for the sake of restoring relationships and in turn, restoring life. Maybe restoring means getting outside help because we as a family or we as those who are closest to him can't do it. And trusting that God's people elsewhere will. You see, throughout scripture, Jesus restored life, not just as he had done to Paul that Paul knew, but there was a woman who was caught in adultery. And the law said that she should be stoned to death. And when she was brought to Jesus who knew the law, he said, let anyone among you who is without sin cast the first stone. And they all walked away. No one is exempt. Jesus said to her, where are they? 
your sins are forgiven, go and sin no more. Not pointing a finger, but building her up, holding accountable, and then moving on. How much can we do though? Sometimes it gets to be too much, doesn't it? Sometimes life is full and the burdens are many and you and I can't take it anymore, so we need to reach out and say we need help. We need to reach out and say there's a community here, here's where you can go, right? We have to have boundaries too, but we don't have to ditch people because we have options. Thankfully, the one Lord who tells us love one another gives us his spirit so that care for each other, it takes on new ways of living. So that caring for each other has become who we are. Most often, we don't think twice, but sometimes we're tempted. But Jesus has a firm grip on us and he turns our hearts and he opens our eyes in ways that we've never been changed before because community matters. You see, the good news is that the one who died on that cross has given you and me his spirit. And by his gracious leading, you and I will have what we need. Perhaps it won't or doesn't come easy and perhaps we want more, but he keeps providing. This Lord provides and when it seems, when it doesn't seem that life is fair for some, perhaps it's because we're being sent to giving more away or to leave being led into a community that can help to give what is needed. Sharing more than we're think, we think we're able or asking for help because others can give. But by his grace, there's always enough. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right. This gracious Lord who holds us close, the one who meets us here in the Lord's Supper, surrounded by the community of heaven and earth, is the one who, through the gift of community and grace, keeps us connected, working for the good of all. We're not exempt from trials and struggles, from transgressions and distractions, Instead, we're promised that by our Lord's Holy Spirit, we are and we will be restored. Restored in a spirit of gentleness for the sake of community. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We appreciate your offerings and support of our continuing ministry at Our Savior's Lutheran Church, a caring community called by Christ to serve and live in faith. Contributions can be made by check, text, online, or mobile app. For details, please see Donate on our website at oslcstillwater.org. Thank you for sharing from the abundance with which God has blessed you. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation Enliven your church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer, 
especially people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our mission partners locally, regionally, and globally, including the Anawak community, Open Hands Midway, Malafu, Tanzania, Mission Jamaica, and Zakaleo, Guatemala. Bless all of our brothers and sisters in Christ that they may also feel in energized, engaged, and equipped to receive your grace and share your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, this house of worship belongs to you. We give thanks and pray for our church musicians. We dedicate to you the joyful noise that comes from this place, the cries of children, the melody of voice and instruments, and the songs from our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray for your healing and power and presence to rest upon those in need of your healing touch, especially Rick Borchard, Jenna and Dan Sorrow, Lee Johnson, Brian Weatherby, Maury Hagen, Jack Mears, Anna Cruson, Chuck Pennard, Sandy Hewitt, Wayne Longstrat, Jack Davis, Larry Tosseth, Britta Dumpke, Joyce Middlestead, Merle Smith, Doris Wallama, Jean Loudon, Pat Thorson, Barry Zimdars, Ray Vaughn, Bob Burns, Jeanette, Emma Smaker, Brittany and her brother Jimmy, Baby Zeke, and Baby Sylvie. And we pray, Lord, for Penny Brettel grieving the death of her brother, Tracy Saunders. Remind her and all of us that we will see our loved ones again. Eternal God, we give you thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abundance and abiding grace. Amen. And now, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. You will see a hand reach out and let this represent you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And if there's more than one in your home, you can communicate with each other at this time. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We have many birthdays and anniversaries in our community from June 10th to the 16th. So I'd like to highlight the anniversary of Rhonda and Mick Ruffini. Happy anniversary to you. And happy birthday to Nolan Ott, Sherry White, Medic Adjek, Gabriella Butala, Sandy Fabio, Layla Gibbs, Judy Johnson, Daniel Smetna, Sharon Holton, Chad Larson, Dennis Eviota, Anthony Toscano, Jean Loudon, Matthew Mock, Doris Wallama, Hunter Glazer, and Zachary Johnson. So happy birthday to all of you and happy anniversary to the Ruffinis. We hope that each of you are being celebrated well and know how much our Savior's care is about you. At this time, let us join together in singing Here I Am, Lord.
May the Lord, mighty Lord, bless and keep you forever. Grant you peace, perfect peace, courage and every endeavor. Lift your eyes to see God's face and God's grace forever. May You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.